Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Local Chat. It's episode, is it, could it be episode 50? Uh, wow, that's wild. Oh, wow. That oh, wow. is crazy. Oh, oh, wow. It's oh. I, I saw myself short because it's not the year, 52 weeks in a year. That's not 50 weeks in a year. Um, but we're getting there. Certainly close. Uh, but we did. I think we did start this the first week of January of this year, which is kind of cool. Makes the, yeah. the year anniversaries pretty easy. Yeah, uh, that's I just count them off every year. Uh, I always I drink another bottle uh, for local chat. Uh, pour one out. Eggnog. Yeah. So we're concluding local <laughs> chat. <laughs> um, man, I love eggnog. Eggnog's so good. Just like melted <sighs> ice cream. I don't know. I haven't had it in years, and I remember liking it. But I'm also pretty sure that as an adult now, it would destroy my stomach. So yeah, I take like 14 extra dairy pills when I drink any amount of eggnog I'm just, I'm just gonna stay away from it uh for fear that i love it too much <laughs> yeah it's 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 really good um no we're here to talk about video games and all sorts of things uh this is pre-recorded if you haven't been able to tell uh because december's been a busy month for all of us uh and i think the last this one last week the next two episodes will all be pre-recorded because uh, that's just the way it is, but we'll be back fresh in 2022 with our delicious live faces. So mm. do not miss mm. that. Uh, first we start mm. with what we have been playing and I haven't been playing much other than Pokemon, uh, fire red. Uh, we've been streaming a ton of that. So go check those out. It's on the main channel. Uh, and I think I just finished Celadon city and then I walked back through Celadon city through Saffron city didn't do anything there because I can't. And back to Lavender Town. And so we're heading to the Poke Tower? Pokemon Tower? That's right. Pokemon Tower next Where episode. All the dead people are. Um, I'm trying That's to train right. up some of my Pokemans uh, in uh, fighting stuff. So uh, I'm properly leveled. And um, yeah, I'm looking forward to playing more of that uh, on Saturday, right? That'll be fun. Um, That's right. No, it's, I'm getting all my the days. Cedar's Day getting crushed yeah. together man i um this is a little bit of a tangent but i'm making another batch of my hot sauce and that's just sitting in the kitchen and every day i look at it and the little uh uh fermentation lock does like the bubble from the pressure pretty cool wait are you are you supposed to ferment hot sauce i'm fermenting the peppers and then oh I, okay i blend them all up uh Gotcha. So, which it, I, it's a little bit of a different recipe right now because there's not as many Fresno peppers because it's the winter. So I substituted a butt more uh, jalapenos, but I'm looking forward to that. Uh, and then the only other game I've been playing, uh, I picked back up today after not playing at all for like a week. Uh, some Halo Infinite. I'm pretty sure I'm getting towards the end. I'm kind of running around doing fogs. The end, and of, the, the end of the game? How, how many hours do you think you got in the game so far? um i want to say i have a probably 10 or 11 in the game so far oh, so even though it's open world it does it's not a huge long game i i kept doing missions <laughs> because gotcha that's how i play halo and it wasn't until the mission before the one i just did that i realized oh right i can just do the open world whenever so i went mm -hmm. around and did a bunch of open world and then to get back into the game today i started another mission but i've it hasn't spit me back out into the open world yet, so... Um, I, I feel like I saw on Twitter there was somebody saying, like, be careful, because I think, like, four missions before the end, you get locked out of the open world stuff. And I can't remember if they said there's a warning or not. So just just heads up on that. Yeah, uh -uh. I, I know you can, you, you can keep playing after you beat the game. So, uh, um, okay, that's good. That's I do good. know that. So, and I've been having fun that grapple I got, I don't care about, there's other upgrades in that game. I don't care about any yeah, of them just... other than the grapple. Um, I'll use the target acquisition thing a, a few times. But... Yeah. If there's, if there's a camo, if there's, if there's a guy wearing invisibility and he's like a yeah. boss, then it's like, okay, yeah, this is what it's meant for. The, yeah. um, fully upgraded grapple is great. Cause you can, f you can grapple to an edge. It pulls you up. And by the time you get to the a little bit past the apex and back down it reloads so you can just climb tall tall yeah. things um and i i realized that when i was falling off the edge and i was catching myself over and over again that i was like creeping my way back up and that's been fun because i've been like doing extra exploratory stuff 
and it's kind of reminding me of like Halo 2 and Halo 3 when I was a bored kid just like going outside the maps and stuff like that so that's been a blast I think they've extra accounted because you have a grappling hook so I've, I've definitely come to places where it's like yeah we think you're gonna go up here so we just shut it off um, but there is yeah. also a, a cave with a giant sandwich in it and I kind of want to find that um <laughs> But overall, I'm having a blast with it. I don't think it's, I don't think it's some crazy game of the year uh, thing, no. but it's certainly a fantastic Halo game, and I think it might be the best since Reach and Three. I think it's certainly better than Four and Five, although I didn't finish I, Five. Um, I did man. enjoy Four. So, so I I've been playing Halo Infinite as well. I I probably only have about two or three hours in. Um, it's very early, so I, I can kind of tell you exactly where I am. I got to the open world. I cleared the first tower, which mm -hmm. is like the first mission in the open world. And I ran around and I did a couple fobs. I did a bunch of those missions on that first area. And that's where I'm at right now. And I'm very conflicted. Like, I feel like when it comes to the gameplay, like the shooting, it feels pretty good. It feels really good. It feels like yeah. Halo, which is great. Okay. But, like, man, this, look, I... I know this game has had a story, a story development. It's had some trouble, but this doesn't feel like a launch title. This is like a very good open beta. And there are so many things in this that feel like they are slapped together. <laughs> like how the loading screen is just like this, like semi generic moving image. And as far as I can tell, that loading screen does not change. It's just the no. same weird little like you're looking down at a chasm and there's a little bit of a lightning effect and then it's like doing like a little parallax thing and it's just like okay i guess that's the loading screen and um even when you go when you go into the map in and out of the map they have like this cool little static effect like it's like it's called tack map so it's like it's loading it it's almost like it's loading a tablet application with a map on it and everything but when you exit out of that map the static image freezes for like a quarter of a second and like ruins the immersion and it happens every single time. And then um, another example is we've talked about how this game, this game looks phenomenal for the first 30 feet. And then if you look past 30 feet, it looks God awful. And um, like there's this there's this really big moment in the beginning of the game where you're you're. So the beginning of the game, you're in space and then they're like, we got to go to the Halo. You go to the Halo structure and you go through a mission and then you pop out onto the open world and the guy's like, come on, I'll give you a Pelican ride to your first place. And you hop in the Pelican, you take off, and you're staring at the back of the Pelican, right? And you're just like, wow, look at this halo. And it's just a whole bunch of just like flat, like barely above placeholder textures. It's like first implementation of textures in the distance. And it's like, yeah, great look at PS3 game, buddy. And it's just like, and it's just like a vista that you're supposed to stare at for like 30 seconds. And it's just like. Am I crazy? But this game really does feel like it's not it's not quite finished. It feels like there's parts of it that are just they haven't even they've just gone through the first implementation. Are, are, are you kind of getting that or are you or are you looking past all that? No, I'm not really seeing much of that. Um, I, like there's some popping and stuff like that, but I haven't really noticed flat textures. There was one point where <laughs> I think it might be that same scene where there's like big columns in the background. And I was like, wow, that mm -hmm. looks awful. Like, why is it? Yeah. And I thought it was loading the columns in front of the background. And then it finally occurred to me that those giant columns are floating. And it's just a perspective thing that makes them look awful. And I was I, like, it clicked in my brain because I went and looked at it again. And mm -hmm. I was like, oh, because I, I thought, and this might never be the same thing, but I thought it looked awful. And I was like, what is that? But it's just, they're floating. It's it's that divide between the land masses. So it's an open world. Yeah. And they're floating there. But it looks like the GTA bug I had a while ago where the rain was going behind street signs in like yeah. a cutscene. So I was so confused. Because that, um, that's the thing is that like, like, I feel like a lot of the landscape art design and aesthetic choices are are not helping them out because it's not like, oh, your game can't load that texture. It's just like, no, that's the texture they chose, etc. And it does not look good. It looks super. It looks like uh, it looks like a Roblox game where somebody just went in. They're like, I'm going to spawn generic geometry with a generic texture on it and not add yeah. any pop or flair to it. Um, yeah, I, I think I'm OK with it. I kind of like the more toyish look of this game that it was yeah. originally going for before 
a lot of people come i mean that's kind of what that original crappy demo was going for and then people mm-hmm. jumped on how bad it looked mostly because it looked bad like texture uh like graphical and lighting wise. system so I, and yeah. lighting system so i think that's where they kind of pivoted away from doing that um so it's it's changed a little bit but i do like that sort of like not low poly count but like flat texture sort of design but yeah. Like you said, when you get up close to stuff, it's very high res. Like, I've been climbing mountains yeah. and stuff, and they look great. Uh, I also really like they got rid of um, all damage, which is usually yes. a really bad thing in Halo. And uh, so I'm just, like, grappling up things, up mountains, and then just jumping off them. Uh, I kind of want mm-hmm. a wingsuit. That would I was thinking cool. that, too, yeah. You have a way um, to get up, but to get down, I basically just jump and then when i'm close enough to the ground i just grapple to the ground yeah I've, but it's i've it's weird. kind of figured out a this isn't as much for that but like when i'm going through hallways and stuff if you grapple to a corner you can swing around uh in yeah. hallways and then the other thing i've done if you jump grapple the ground and jump as soon as you hit the ground you can skip pretty far like a skipping stone and oh, that's, that's cool. a good traversal technique as well. So I, I will say, like, I, I really enjoy that they added a grappling hook here, but the grappling hook doesn't quite feel great to me. Um, and I think part of it is the distance at which you can grapple. I think it needs to be a little bit longer. And then the other problem is if you're looking at something, it will tell you if you can grapple it or not, but it's a little tiny dot in the middle of your crosshair. Yeah. And I was testing it the other day. I don't think it shows that crosshair all the time. So there are times when you can definitely grapple something and it doesn't show the dot. And yeah. it's, it's I was wonky. trying to figure out that too, because at first I thought it was only when it was something I could pick up that it showed the dot. Mm-hmm. But then I think it appeared again later and I, I couldn't tell. Um, but yeah, that's it's, definitely it's just a thing. not a good UI. Yeah, it's uh, not it's not good UI for that. Yeah, and I will say my other favorite thing is being able to just grapple fusion coils and toss them. Um, yeah. I think all of my my Xbox clips from Halo Infinite are me nailing brutes really far away with fusion coils. Yeah, um, and th- there's different types of them, so you like feel good when you're uh, when you're hitting them. And then my only other complaint uh, with the game is uh i think the select selecting thing for grenades and your abilities is just not good oh it's 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 not that it, it, i don't think it's that it's not good it's, it's that like a sub it's, menu it's very very difficult to see it yeah <laughs> so like because what they do what they do is is you you press a direction on the on the d-pad to open up either the great grenade selection or the equipment selection. And then it pops icons, little tiny icons above it of like your two selections of the grenades. And then there's two D pad icons and the D pad icons are identical, except there's a little tiny dot on the D pad of which direction to push. And I was like, I have, I have a 65 inch 4k TV. I sit about seven or eight feet from it. And when I pop that menu, I still have to pause and go, what, where's the dot? Is it on, is it on the left yeah. or the right? It's, it's just not, yeah, it's I, not good. I never changed grenades anyway, so that part didn't matter. And then I kind of memorized where the certain items were, but it's just like the hitting it once and then hitting a different direction is really yeah. annoying. And basically what I've done now is, or sorry, not what I've done. What I think they should have done is just have it like old Halo games where you hit one side of the D, the left side of the D-pad to change between grenades, to the cycle. right side of the D-pad to cycle through the equipment. That makes much more sense. That makes so much more sense. Yeah. Cause it's just like, cause then it's like, oh, I'm in a, I'm in combat. It's two taps to get to my drop shield, and then uh, one tap back to get back to my grappling hook. Like, yeah, I don't know. It's, I feel like there it's, were a lot of people on both sides of this, and one side eked out, and that's what the controller scheme is. But I just yeah. realized there are other controller schemes, and I remember talks when this game came out of people switching those. That could be so another maybe it's thing. Better. Yeah, I think there's like a classic so, mode or something. It's it's just it's like uh, I feel so conflicted about this game because when it gets down to the the gameplay, like the core core gameplay, the shooting, it feels fantastic. I feel like the enemy AI is really good. Like I'm actually dying a decent amount and it's because totally. I overcommit or I get flanked and it's never like a cheese moment. It's just like it's always my fault. Um, 
and it feels really good. The gun, the gunplay feels great. Throwing grenades, getting into these combats, it's it's a lot of fun. But then I look at things like how the UI is implemented. I look at like the map. I feel like the map is god awful because you can't tell what icons you have cleared or not without actually yeah. like it's it's so confusing. Like the graphics not being great. I feel like the open world has a lot of I don't want to say emptiness in it, but it's a lot of similar events it doesn't really feel like an open world it just feels like a handful of of events scattered around and repeated and so it's like it's just very conflicted it 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 really does i'll go back to what i said it feels like an open beta it feels like them going hey we think we've got the core of a really good game here tell us what you think about it and that's going to determine how we kind of implement these and we'll tweak that tweak that but instead it's the full release and it's like I don't know. I'm still having fun with it. I'll keep playing it, but I, I'm yeah. a little underwhelmed. I, I gotta think, admit. I think uh, what I just thought up here is like, if it was any other, if this was a new IP from any other company from anywhere, it would just be an average open world game with some shooting in it and all that sort of stuff. But to me, yeah. it is an opportunity to play more Halo, a game series I really enjoy. And there's all these systems on top of it. And none of those systems are keeping me from enjoying the Halo that's there, but they're not enhancing the Halo experience as much as I would like them to. So they're not- I, I would say, I would say they are changing the Halo experience yes. for better or worse, whereas it got to a point where it was just mediocre story and a whole bunch of mediocre campaign right. missions. And so the fact that they're branching out from that, trying something different, good or bad, feels exciting. Yeah. And I think those things they chose to the things they chose to branch out on gameplay wise, nail it pretty much across the board. And the secondary things like the tack map and the icons yep. and all that sort of stuff are tertiary. So they're not making the game bad they're not inhibiting my ability to play halo but they're not making me be like oh man halo's great with this tack map i want it in the next halo like where i am like i need a grappling hook for every halo game from now on um so i think it's it's kind of it's kind of weird i'm 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 like my enjoyment with this game is almost like a like a like a parabola like over time when i get into a good firefight great enjoyment and then i go okay where's the next firefight let me pull up the TAC map. Oh, I, I can't. What is this? I can't tell what the TAC map is trying to tell. Okay, I'll go in this direction. There's kind of nothing going on. And it goes down. Your excitement goes down. Then you get into a good firefight. And then the excitement goes down. And it's it. that's that's not good. I mean, when I think about something like Halo 4 or even Halo 5, which was just kind of like medium to low excitement all the way through, that was at least constant. And in Halo Infinite, it's like you got some great moments, but you've also got a lot of like downtime and disappointment so it's this weird yo-yo experience that i'm having are are you feeling kind of like that where there's like really good moments but then there's not great downtime yeah i i I, there's definitely been parts like that but i think a lot of that's mitigated by like that downtime for me is when i'm walking between between places or traveling and like i'm Mm -hmm. enjoying walking through stuff and like scaling stuff and halo jumping up a mountain like that's yeah. pretty fun and and there's there's been enough secrets that i've stumbled across that i've i've like i went out to a top of a random mountain and there was a whole campsite with a with a specially painted sniper rifle and an audio log Ooh. and there was a uh balloon of the arbiter from halo 2 and 3 and i was like hitting that and all that sort of that's stuff cool. and then another time i was headed towards a fob to complete it and i came across a group of marines before i completed the fob so i like found them in a cave and i went and helped them out so that's been cool uh and i think that's mitigated a lot of the like boring between things and on the flip side i've also just been like like i said plowing through those campaign missions so i think i've had a lot of action going the whole time and then i'm kind of yeah. leaving the open world towards the end um so i can that's kind fair. Of explore it more or yeah i I mean i i i think just just to kind of wrap this up i will say i think game pass is doing some heavy lifting with this game because if this was a 60 dollar game i would be pretty disappointed with it honestly i would i would feel like i bought into an open beta and um the fact that this is game pass and it basically to me it costs zero dollars to play halo infinite because i'm already a game pass subscriber and there's there's no there's no investment into this game. It's just another game to download off Game Pass and play. 
that makes it much, much easier to swallow this as, yeah, it's got some flaws, it's not perfect, but I'm enjoying it, versus if this is supposed to be a $60 Microsoft tentpole release, I would I, I would definitely be a lot more disappointed with it. Yeah, I think that's fair. And also, it's a good thing it didn't come out last year. That would have been... Yeah, I can't imagine what state it was in last year if this is the state it's in right now where it feels like it's a bit, yeah. a bit rushed. Like... I know they had cut two thirds of the game to get it out last year, and then they put that back in. So I think mm -hmm. you're basically if they hadn't done that. You would have had a super if they hadn't re-added it. You would have a super polished third of a game this year, versus yeah. now we have a hundred percent of probably a half polished full game. You know? um, yeah, I think That's that fair. worked out. Um, great. Uh, anything else you have been playing? Yeah, I've been playing two other things I want to talk about. Um, so screw your transition attempt. Um, the first thing I want to talk about, this was announced at the Game Awards. Uh, we'll get to the Game Awards shortly, but it was teased a little bit and then it was officially released with the Game Awards. It is uh, basically a tech demo media tie in experience. It is The Matrix Awakens. Will, have you heard anything about The Matrix Awakens? The Unreal 5 experience? Yeah, that's right. It's basically for PS5 and Xbox Series SX only. It is a playable Unreal 5 engine demo. And it's bonkers, y'all. So it's basically three parts. It's a tie-in with The Matrix, but it's also an Unreal Engine demo. So the first one is it's Keanu Reeves and Carrie Ann Moss who play Neo and Trinity in the Matrix. And they're talking to the to you. Me. And they're also showcasing some stuff. It's kind of got this tongue in cheek meta thing where they're like, this is un technology has become unreal. And then they're like, they're like talking about meta human, but also within the context of the Matrix. Like you can't tell what's real and what's not real. And you can change anything at a moment's notice. And they also they did some cool things, which is um they recreated some scenes and quick shots from the original movie, but completely in Unreal. And I, I, there were moments where this started up where I was fully, I was fully bamboozled. Like I knew it was a tech engine demo, but there are definitely moments where you look at it and you go, that's real. And then you go, no, remember, it's not. <laughs> it's crazy how good it looks. Um, especially like, like it's, it's crazy. It's like Keanu, the thing that's not real about it that gives it away is the facial animation. It's very good, but it's not quite there. And they did like a long shot where he's moving and his hair doesn't quite bounce enough. It feels a bit too static. Everything else is almost perfect. And they did a really good job of being like, we're showing this at, at a lock 24 FPS and we're putting some film grain on it. And it's like, and they did some things where I think they took actual, scenes from the movie and they inserted CG stuff in it. And you're just like, I can't tell the difference. I cannot tell the difference. It's insane. Yeah, it's wild. Um, so that's just the first part. The second part is, is more of a playable. You're playing a car chase. Um, I will say that looks very good. Um, it's just that it does run like at 30 or less. You mm -hmm. okay over there? I was getting a hair off my mic, my microphone. <laughs> Um, it's, it's just, it's very weird. I want to keep talking about this, but I think all I'm just going to say over and over again is that it looks very good. They do these, uh, the, there's, there's something else I want to talk about, which is, um, there was a really good Twitter thread. I wish I could credit who it was. Um, they were talking about how with unreal Epic wants to make video game development more like Hollywood movie making. Um, and the way they explained that was if you think about a movie, Okay, sorry, I'm just getting so excited. I'm thinking about oh, it. Fluster. How do you make a movie? Do you, when you go to make a movie, do you stitch all the costumes yourself? Do you make a fake town? No. You go to a company that owns a lot, or you pay a business to use their business, or you hire a, a, you know, a prop master that's going to provide wardrobe, etc. Video games aren't like that. When you make a video game, it's kind of expected, and in some, in a lot of cases, it's required that you make 
everything yourself. You know, you make your own assets, you make your own music, you make your own, not necessarily engine, but your tools to use that engine, etc. And um, that brings me to the third part of The Matrix Awakens, which is, it's, it's a city. It's, it's a full open world city. It's probably, ha- the city is probably half the size of the GTA 5 map. And it's fully populated with NPCs and traffic and unique buildings and assets all throughout it. And the crazy thing is this was not made by like a huge team of people. I think it was only made by a handful of people. And the whole thing is like, hey, we didn't hand make these assets. We didn't hand place them either. All of this, all of this is us using Unreal Engine 5 and the tools they have in it. So you can you can use a building placement tool and you say, uh, I want buildings like this from two stories to five stories, and they need to be between 10 and 20 feet apart. And it just goes, boom, done. There's your city. You can tweak parameters and all of that is custom made for you. I'm sorry, not custom made. All of that is, is automatically made for you. Um, same with NPCs, same with the traffic. So what Unreal is basically, what, what Epic is trying to show off with the Unreal Engine 5 and with this demo is, don't sweat the small stuff anymore. You know, don't try and make all of it yourself. Don't try and make your own traffic system, et cetera. Don't try and hand make your city by placing things. Use the engine and use pre-made assets that you can buy from other people. Or use the, the engine also will like tweak and pre-make assets for you, unique assets, mm. to automatically populate the space. And then you can go in and tweak it as you need to. And it's crazy. Like, like I said, it does run less than 30, but it's like full ray tracing. It looks phenomenal. They're, they're using some, some voxel type uh, rendering stuff. So like you'll see a, like a building in the distance and you can get all the way up in it. Like I was looking at like the core niche of a building that had like very intricate stone scroll work. And I got all the way in and I still couldn't tell like, like the, uh, the triangles and the Courtesies. texture lines, etc. Wow. Yeah, like it's. What are you playing on? Xbox Series X. On oh, Series X. Um, yeah, if you have a PS5 or a Series SX, you should absolutely 100% download it because yeah, it's it's the way it was described to me, and the reason that I really wanted to hop onto it, and the thing and the message that I can reiterate is this is one of the very very few true next gen experiences you can have right now, and it's it's just crazy what they're able to do with it. Um, yeah, but that's, yeah, that's that's, that's Matrix wild. Awakens. I, I watched a 10 minute video because I had to edit a video together. And yeah, it looked really cool. I will say the one thing I, I agree 100% that it was hard while watching it to tell the difference. Like, am I watching a movie? Is this real life? Is this uh, CG? Yeah. And I say the one thing that will immediately tell you that it is CG is because it is recreated from a real movie. So when you see the real movie next to it, you immediately know which one is unreal and which one's the real movie. Not because the un- unreal one looks bad, but because they look different and have slightly different coloring yeah. because you can't 100% nail it. That That's why. And I think as much as, as great as this is, I feel like a known quantity was a not a bad idea, but a bad test for that. Because you can compare it to the original and people can be like, yeah, I can tell the difference. Versus if you compared it to, it, it was just its own thing. Be like, can you tell yeah. if that's real life or not? Then people would be like, oh, I can't. Um, I, I hear that, but but part of me was also, when I was watching it, especially that first entrance, which is the first section, which is just Keanu and, and uh, Kirian Moss like talking and doing things. When it first started out, I was like, is this, has it started yet? Has it started yet? You know, and, and I kept having to ask myself that because of how good it looked versus whereas if I knew it was a fake thing from the beginning, I'd be like, oh, this is fake, but it looks pretty good. So so just a, yeah. just another side of that coin. I, I think there's definitely give and take there. No, I, I agree because w- when I watched it, I thought, I thought it was the movie. I was like, oh, they're just putting scenes from the movie here. And then yeah. when... I had to QA someone's comparison of the Unreal to the movie. That's when I was like, oh, it does look different, but it looks different because... Because you you're comparing you, them. Because yeah. you, you don't know what the lighting on set was when they made the Like, that's the yeah. reason. No. Um, it's wild. It's, I'm definitely going to download it. Because I, I, yeah. I didn't think it looked that good. Like, I wasn't that into it until I heard you could just, like, walk around that city. 
and that's kind of yeah, all totally I want to do. Can you do that from the start? You can just choose to do that. You don't have to do the other stuff. I don't think so, but I think the other stuff maybe takes 10 minutes. Um, oh, okay. I, I will say it does chug a little bit. And also, it's not super fun walking and driving around the city, not because of the engine, but because you can tell they didn't put a lot of resources into making the driving feel good or like giving you a whole lot of like run sprint animations to make it feel good. It's more about those are more just methods for you to, to walk around in it. But. Yeah, it's definitely worth trying. If you yeah. have an next-gen console, try it out. It's free. Okay, I'm going to download that after this podcast, or before this podcast, if you're listening to this. um, Do you want to talk about the next game on your list? Yeah, I want to talk about it real quick. This came out today. I've played about 15 minutes of it. It's called Babel Royale. It's a free-to-play indie game. It just hit Steam. It's Scrabble as a Battle Royale. It's pretty bonkers. Um, basically, <laughs> it's OK. It's just it's kind of funny because we joke all the time about like, what if it was a librarian themed battle royale? But like you there's this giant Scrabble board, right? And I think there's I don't know how many players there are. Let's say 40. And you all drop in as a tile. <laughs> so you drop into the map and you choose where it's so you're falling and you choose where to drop. Mm hmm. And then you, you're just a letter tile and basically you land and like, let's say every 10 seconds or so you get a new letter. And um, and then from there, you're playing Scrabble. You're trying to make a, a word off of your 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 last word that you laid down. But as the game's going on, the uh, playable area of the Scrabble board is shrinking. And so if you're stuck outside, if you're working on a word and it's outside, then and, and a certain timer goes off, then you're, you're dead. The other way to die is if we're making words next to each other and I make a word that connects to your word, that kills you. That's a knockout. Oh. Um, but it's it's actually really challenging because it like I, I had this one earlier where I thought I was doing really good in the game until I realized that all my words were keeping me in the corner and I needed to make words that went up and to the left and I just couldn't with what I had. Um, it's crazy. It doesn't have loot. Well, it kind of has loot. Like, there's certain tiles that if you incorporate this tile into your word, then you get a bomb, which, like, clears letters around you. Or you get extra money. You use the money. I think at the beginning, your 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 tile holder only has, like, four slots, which means at the most you can have four letters. And then as you as you make words, you get money to then buy extra extra slots on your tile holder. And I think you can have up to, like, seven or eight letters there. Um... And it's it like it has these abilities. It has these pickups. It's pretty neat. Um, I do have one qualm with it, which is that I don't think they're using the official Scrabble dictionary. And as somebody who's played a lot of Scrabble with their parents, I know a lot of the weird words in the Scrabble dictionary, and some of them are not allowed in Babel Royale. Um, I can't think of a concrete example, but there was one or two that I played that I was like, I know that's a valid word, and they yeah. didn't accept it. And that was frustrating, but it's definitely like because it's the other thing is it's not it, the the big difference from Scrabble is that Scrabble, you can play anywhere on the board, right? Mm -hmm. As long as it connects to something already on the board and it makes a valid word or words. But like if I play if I play top and then I play pot, so T.O.P. and then P.O.T., I can only play off of pot because that's the last word I played. Oh, so it's, it's almost like snake. Like you are, you can only play off the last word you played. So it super limits where you can play. Um, it lets you move in a direction and it's, it's the location of your last word that determines if you're in the hot zone or not, but it makes it so much more difficult because it really limits where you can build. And honestly, I, I don't think I like that because it's like, if you're playing Scrabble, but you can't play anywhere on the board. You have to play in a very specific location, and that sucks. That's interesting. Um, I'm looking but at. Anyways, the, yeah, sorry, I'm looking at the Steam page right now. It looks interesting. I don't know why, but the it looks. Like, I I thought it was Factorio screenshots for a second. I know. It looks it's like, like the color scheme and everything. It's really weird. Um, it came out today. There's yeah. already someone with a review who has 9.4 hours on record. Yeah, it's it, if that interests you at all, it's free to play. Check it out. I just wanted to highlight it because. It's a crazy take on the battle royale genre, and um, that deserves to be lauded. You know, we, we've talked a little bit about Inscription and other bonkers games, and anything that takes a crazy innovative look at video game development absolutely deserves some attention. So uh, I'm, I'm happy to shout them out. That's awesome. 
yeah um yeah i'm definitely gonna check that out i just i also realized not uh a shout out to another game uh if you're listening to this today is the release date for the gunk which is the new game from the steam world people i think it's tomorrow actually but it's close but if you're listening to this it's today yes unless you're in the future in which case we're sorry yeah, so sorry. If you're somehow listening to us right now recording this, then I need to have a word with you, because that shouldn't be possible. But if you're listening to this on release, it is out today. I just pre-ordered it, pre-ordered it, pre-loaded it on Game Pass, uh, because I didn't want to forget about it, because it actually looks pretty cool. Yeah. Um, That's my game shout-out. Um, and that's all the game stuff, which means it's time to move to the news. And I'm going to do something I always forget to do, which is change the image to the news image. I never, ever do that. Um, which means it's time for the news. And that means we got to play the news theme song. And instead of us trying to time it out, I'm going to clap and it's going to play. Here's the news, we're talking about news, it's gaming news, what's up news? That was the news theme song, folks. I hope you enjoy. Did you need to do anything? I can pause for a second. Um, no, I, the only thing I wanted was if we could just keep this little polite pause in here, because that's very cute of you. Thank you, we can continue. Yeah, you're welcome. Um, folks, that was the news theme, uh, which means it's time to talk about the news all sorts of news. It's gaming news. What's up, news? What's up, news? Uh, it can't not sing it. It's great. So good. Um, the biggest news of the week uh, that just came out today. I don't care about any of this other news. All this other news is crap. It's the fact that at PAX Unplugged this weekend, I bought a board game called Robin Hood, blah, blah, blah. And it's oh, really God. fun. And I keep the playing game it. section. It's too late. Uh, no. Sorry. Um, sorry. We should have done that. Uh, anyways, <laughs> I'm going to start with the fact that Netflix is making a Mega Man movie. And wait, wait a minute. I'm sorry. Will, like that sentence alone perfectly makes sense. I think you're forgetting it's live action. Why are you making a live action Mega Man movie? So stupid. Do uh... you think Mega Man will be played by? Tom Holland, Timothy Chalamet, or that annoying kid from Stranger Things. Look, as somebody who who is skinny, Timothy Chalamet is a stick. So just imagine <laughs> him, like six feet tall, hunched over, and he's got these giant cannons on his hands, and he just looks like a stick with berries. And like, it's like, how old? Are, like, it's ugh. so easy to make Mega Man animated. I think he's like, teen. But is how he like old? A, is he like, Ten? Is this going to be a kid's... Like, it's not a good idea. I know... Okay, so here's what I'm also thinking. I'm thinking they do Mega Man movie, but Mega Man's animated like Sonic's animated in the Sonic movie. That can't be right. Oh, here it is. Mega Man, his age is 30, but he's programmed as 10. Oh, this is like a weird pedophile I robot. Know. <laughs> I know! <laughs> Yeah, he's thirty, like but a, I made him look like a ten-year-old. <laughs> I know it's like a it's like a pedophile's first robot. <laughs> it's like you know, te- technically it's okay. It's like that rock <laughs> sketch I, for SNL <laughs> where he makes the, the for the evilest invention. He makes a robot that molests people, and all the other <laughs> evil people are like, "What the heck, dude? I made a freeze ray. You can't do that." <laughs> it's like that movie Orphan, where it turns turns out takes a weird erotic turn it's like, <laughs> what you know movie orphan where the whole thing is it's supposed to be they get it they, they adopt this little girl who's like 10 but at the the twist at the end is it's really like a 30 year old woman and oh, like that's halfway terrifying through, halfway through the movie she like tries to seduce her new ad- adopted father and the, oh. but the, the really creepy thing is that they didn't get a 30 year old actress to play the 10 year old it's a 10 year old actress playing a 30 year old woman pretending Ugh. to be 10 years old Yes. I don't like that. I know. Ugh. Anyways, like I feel like I, I played Mega Man 2. It was fantastic. I think Mega Man has a great aesthetic. It should Wait, 100 sorry, your and call 10. Out was that you played Mega Man 2? <laughs> and it's it was great. fantastic. I, it's great. It's a really good... Man, that menu music, that main theme just kicks so I, good. I played Anyways, a lot of Mega Man X. 
I feel like Mega Man has a fantastic aesthetic and it really just needs to be like a super over the top, like 2D animation, right? Like anime style, even just like real crazy, like Dragon Ball Z over the top, just like, wow, flash explosion, like, whoa, how goddamn dare you go live action with this, especially after the trash that was Cowboy Bebop. Like, this is not going to work as live action. How are we supposed to? It's, what are they going to do? Are they going to go full cartoon stupid like they did with Cowboy Bebop? Or are they going to go like gritty realistic where Mega Man's not blue? It's like <laughs> a dark blue rusted suit and it's like gritty. It's like, this is a terrible idea. I just Somebody want... needs to be shot. This is awful. I just want oh, the Mega Man, Mega Man universe, but it's like 40K. <laughs> Dr. Yes. Light. It's like Dr. How... like. <laughs> I know. How do you put how do you put somebody in the Mega Man suit and have it not look like either 40k or like a bad costume mascot? Hey, like Dark Mega Man would be so good. 40k Mega Man. God. So I uh, Okay, I, wait a minute. I take it back. You could totally pull this off if it is a hard R Mega Man and it's <laughs> he's an alcoholic now, half his suit is broken and piss stained and <laughs> And people keep calling him a pedophile. It's just a plot reason. of John Wick, but they shoot the robo dog at the beginning. <laughs> they shoot the robo dog, and the the secret villain at the end is his is his dad, the scientist that made him, <laughs> Doctor Light. Um, so oh, I, I I'm putting this in before it happens. I think I think Mega Man will be animated, like Sonic is animated in the Sonic movies. Oh my god. That's a good I think bet. he'll be from a different planet or whatever, and he'll be animated because he's from a different reality, and all those people will be animated, but there'll be a little boy or James Marsden who finds them and gets sucked into the light. Sucked off uh, into the sucked Mega off Man. Into the, <laughs> below him. Uh, oh. It'll be wild. God. I Yeah, I think this is just going to be I think it's going to be Spy Kids, where it's just going to be kid focused. It's going to be live action, but it's going to be a lot of like crazy town, like type stuff going on. And this this is upsetting because when I said when I saw Mega Man movie, I thought, yeah, great. Throw some money at it. Great. 2D animation over the top. Crazy. And it's in live action just kills it immediately. That's very unlikely that they're going to pull that off properly. Yeah, no way. Uh, Moving forward in the news. uh... If If I may, I think we need a new segment of local chat news called the crypto corner where we talk about the latest developments in nft and blockchain gaming technology the crypto announced, corner announced yesterday gala games is spending a hundred million dollars in their new blockchain fund for games in the blockchain including a brand new one from peter molyneux which has already raised 30 million dollars and hasn't even been released yet. This voice hurts. Well, I am. Um, I we should get voice modulation up and running so we can do the segment as robots. Yes, that's great. Uh, the other, I just want to get through this as quickly as possible. The other one is Stalker Two comes out today and says, "Guess what? We have NFTs, and you can be a metahuman if you buy this NFT thing. Then we'll put you as an NPC in the game." And I think the best, the best thing I saw, the best tweet response to this was. Guys, if we make enough noise, we're gonna get st- we can get Stalker Two kicked off of Steam because they don't allow blockchain games. I thought yeah. my favorite response was the uh, re- someone screenshotted the refund menu on Steam. Yeah, um, yeah. It's this is like, like I I don't know. First of all, I isn't I guess I thought Microsoft owned Stalker, but Stalker's just coming to the Xbox yes. first. Or at least first, but I think they're they're on they're on Game Pass. Yeah. So, I, but and second, this doesn't feel like a like a stalker. Whoa, your camera just went cool, Ian. They've hacked you. Oh my gosh. My my camera's normal on OBS. In, oh, in OBS, you are just disgusting. I think Will Wright and Peter Molyneux got together. <gasps> they it's got a, to me. It's the I'm it's gonna... the Forza Horizon Seven or it's the Forza Seven <laughs> game <laughs> duo all over again. Uh, I'm gonna I'm finish gonna... your thought. I'm gonna you finish go. your thought for yeah. you, which is that Stalker Stalker has a lot of themes in it. Stalker, 
the stalker games roadside picnic the stalker movie um and i think definitely one of those themes is this like is this like anti-capitalist ethic of you know people are so concerned about themselves they're so selfish you're concerned about find finding things to buy to sell and trade to to live off of it's also this idea of all of uh, you know this this the humans in this zone had all these objects and this materialism that is now worth absolutely nothing and you're just going through the rubble of it and so for them to be like yeah those themes mesh perfectly with this shameless future capitalist cash grab which is you pay us money for completely worthless digital goods and it's like no that's not stalker bro like like look i'm gonna say this and this makes sense cyberpunk 2077 should have had nfts <laughs> It 100% yeah. makes sense because Cyberpunk was all about like, look at this cool new tech, but at the same time, kind of tongue in cheek being like, this tech is stupid. It would have made 100% sense for them to have NFTs. Stalker 2 is not that game. It is antithetical to what the game's themes and motifs are. And um, it's just, it's a shame to see this because I was looking forward to that game. I'm still going to play it. But yeah. this is, this is, this is the same as the developer basically saying like, I don't know. I can't even come up with something this bad. It's like a developer saying something that is clearly wrong and the bad thing to say in terms of game design. And it makes you doubt maybe the underlying game itself is not good. And that's that's very worrisome. Yeah, it's wild. I, I actually um, I saw this and I was like, oh, maybe I won't play Stalker 2. And then I was like, I installed the other Stalker games because I was like, maybe it's time to play those <laughs> yeah. again. Um. I have, I, this is a tangent, I have 15 hours in Stalker Shadow of Chernobyl, which is the first Stalker video game, and I have zero recollection of playing that video game. Um, so I think That's a little weird. Yeah, I, I think I'm going to just start it over. I know I beat it too, which is wild. Um, other things, uh, those were both the crypto corner. Uh, final bit of news here. Crypto corner. Uh, there was an 8 minute and 44 second video today that basically had nothing in it except announcing that the Ubisoft Toronto is working on a Splinter Cell remake. This is this is a weird announcement, and here's why it's weird. Because people have been shouting for Splinter Cell for years now. They kept announcing Splinter Cell adjacent things like, hey, we're adding Splinter Cell guy to our weird Ubisoft free shooter thing. And being like, you can get Splinter Cell mm, uh, customizations in this other game. But I think they even added Splinter Cell to the AVP game. Either that or, or Break or Ghost Recon Breakpoint. It was weird. Yeah. And then when it's finally time for them to announce that they are making a new game, which is a big announcement, they just drop it in a tweet with like a pointless video. And it's like, no, why don't you do that at the Game Awards? Maybe they missed the Game Awards. Why don't you hold on to it until you've got something? You do it at E3 next year. Like, you need to make some money off this, baby. You need to build some hype and dropping it in a tweet. You ain't Tendo. You can't yeah. do that. It's, it was you ain't weird. Because, like, you know people want it. So there's no point in announcing it to gain fervor. It's not like you're announcing it and it's a Kickstarter campaign. Like, you, you have yeah. all the cards. And you can play them whenever like but like why why are you just like showing everyone your hand now when it but could be so much just that, bigger like it's it's like it's not just so much showing your hand now it's like you stand up to go to the restroom and you accidentally leave your cards face up it's like what are you doing like there is a better way to reveal this now even if you want to if you do want to reveal it this early yeah. you hype it up a lot you don't just drop it in a tweet it's yeah. there's there's some there's definitely misplays here wild um and that's pretty much all the news this week because it's wednesday not that another day really adds that but there's no grub snacks for me to steal all the news from um which means it's time for us to head on to the news now it's time for us to recap the game awards i watched the game awards live but i was also working oh. um so i really didn't watch them i mostly was just editing a lot um ian did you watch these live God, no. I watched Matrix Reloaded instead, which was the better choice. God, that's hot. Um, so how do you want to do this? I was kind of thinking we kind of go through the win some of the winners, kind of what sticks out to you, and then we head on down to the game reveals. 
And let's just let's just go, go to the game that. reveals. I I think look, don't take the game awards very seriously. They're they've got some problems. It tends to be a lot more of the popular games to get more heavily weighted. Inscription didn't win anything, which is a huge mistake. Uh, yes. So there's there's also some in here that won Returnal one best to action. There's a couple others in here that are just bonkers. Some like C- cyberpunk was nominated twice when it should not have been nominated at all. So don't take the award seriously in this at all. I bet half of these weren't even presented during the live stream because that's how, yeah, that's how, much. how little respect they show for these awards. So let's just skip to what they want us to care about, which are these game reveals. How about, how about you, uh, pick a game reveal that, 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 Game reveal or show off that uh, that you got excited about. We can talk about it a little bit, and we'll just yeah. kind of go back and forth till um, we're out. I um I was really into uh, the Star Wars Eclipse trailer. I don't know if mm-hmm. you watched it, but it just came. I did not. It came across as like this. It came across as someone put that trailer together who just knew what was awesome about Star Wars and what to show <laughs> off about Star Wars. Like, just, I don't know, because I, like, look, I was working on another video, and I looked up, and I just saw Mm -hmm. an image, and I went, is this Star Wars? And then it cut to two people swinging their lightsabers at each other on, like, a narrow bridge, and I was like, yeah, Yeah. it is Star Wars! Um, it's, it's the Quantic Dream game, which, it, I mean, so, I saw so many people on Reddit afterwards being like, yeah, it's Quantic Dream, it's just gonna be a, just gonna be a visual novel, all this stuff. Listen, Quantic Dream games are pretty good. Troy yeah. Become Human is a fantastic game, I it's a fantastic it. looking game. I liked it. And they've come a long way, and they're not just like point-and-click adventures. Um, so, it's just, I think it looks really good. This is obviously an early concept. Um, I think they just, I just started real quick. working on it. There, there's a lot going on in this trailer, and by that I mean there's a lot of different like locales and destinations and characters. And Quantic Dream games typically are very, I don't want to say refined, but they're very narrowed and focused. And so I'm curious because it's typically like, okay, here's a cast of characters and they're going through these scenes, and this is like, this is showing a lot of different stuff. So this could be something crazy for Quantic yeah. Dream. I'm not saying that different type of type of game, but this seems much bigger in scope than they've done before. Yeah, so I, I can either see it's a much bigger scope thing or their story just brings you to all these different locations and they're not as open as the one location in yep. uh, one of their main games. So I can see it either way. I, I, I'm just, I'm here for Star Wars storytelling. I think it'll be neat. Um, obviously, they probably have something good up their sleeve if... If someone's giving them this chance, or they must have had a great pitch, uh, and it's it's High Republic, which honestly I know nothing about. Um, so it'll be really interesting to see. Um, I thought that trailer was very cool, very cool. So definitely look it up if you haven't seen it. Yeah, I want to talk about Sonic Frontiers. Now, look, I'm not a Sonic fan because um, Sonic games are too focused on the 2D, and the 2D Sonic games suck, quite frankly. Um, but Sonic Frontiers is it's open world Sonic and it it's it's heavily inspired by Breath of the Wild. So it's a lot of nature scenes. It's a lot of vistas with unique viewpoints to go to. Uh, it's a lot of like overgrown old buildings and then like weird robots you're fighting against. Um, I'm very excited for this. And here's why. Uh, a couple of years ago, somebody released like an Unreal Engine 3 Sonic game. And it was basically just like this big open space with grass and stuff. And you could go around as Sonic. And it was just so much fun to just be like rolling around super fast and going through these loops in this open world of being like, how can I get up there? Oh, I'll get real high speed. I'll hit this ramp and I'll bounce off this and get up there. And I feel like Sonic is begging for an open world game. You know, like the whole thing that I hate about the 2D Sonic is that the speed is completely lost in in such a confined viewpoint that the faster you go, the less you can see and the more likely you are to die or make a mistake. And so it's kind of this counterintuitive thing where you're like, well, I should really be going slower so that I can see what's coming. But to put me in a 3D space where I can literally just build up speed and rip across a plane and jump over mountains and stuff, like, heck yeah, I'm in. So I'm, I'm hesitantly optimistic for this, but this feels like I've been saying this for years. They should do an open world Sonic, and it looks like they're finally doing it. 
and from what I can tell, it, it looks like they're doing the right doing it the right way. So I'm I'm very excited for it. Yeah. Uh, and just because we're running out a, a little close on time here, I'm just going to hit some of the other ones that I thought were really neat. Uh, Homeworld 3, I know you were excited about. You had mentioned. Yeah. Um, it, that's it looks like Homeworld, announced. which yeah. is great. I, I've never played a Homeworld game, and this is a perfect opportunity for me to dive in. Uh, they announced Alan Wake 2. Uh, I love, love, love Alan Wake. Uh, huge fan. Uh, and then Control's great, so I think mixing everything they've learned with Control back into Alan Wake uh, will be will be quite quite a force to reckon with. Uh, oh, Arc Raiders from I think Embark Studios, which uh, friend of Subpixel Celia works for. I forget what she does oh. for them, but they they announced. I, I've been following them on Twitter because she had retweeted them forever ago, and. Uh, this is sort of like a a futuristic, funky post-apocalyptic fighting robots. It looks like that Generation Zero game, but upbeat. Yeah. Uh, and this trailer had looks cool. um, this trailer had a song in it that uh, everyone kept. It's a uh, Robin. Is that the name of the artist? It's anyways. It's a really good song. Robin Thick. Uh, not Robin Thick. Robin Thin. No. Uh, Dancing seen on my own by Robin. Yeah. yeah, it's a really good song if you haven't heard it. So definitely go check out that trailer as well. Uh, and then something else, but I really can't remember what it was. So, um, yeah, definitely go check out, oh, Warhammer Space Marine 2 they announced, uh, which people went crazy for, because apparently that first Warhammer Space Marine game is really good, and I didn't know that. I... Um, is that the, is that the third person shooter one? Yeah, for 360, I think, and PC. I think I played a little bit, yeah, and it was, it was good. I might have to try that, because I think I might own it, and I've just never touched it. Uh, we did we did get to finally see a trailer for the halo tv series yes i I don't know how i feel about this i feel like like half of me is like it looks there the like the aesthetic looks good there's also all these shots of like people staring into the camera which makes me think they're going to take a much more human angle which i really appreciate i don't i don't care about the dr halsey storyline and it feels like that's in here and there's also like some of the action shots and some of like the the set piece shots feel like they got 10 extras and not enough props to fill the set space. And it's just like a bit yeah. thrown together. I think a so. lot of it's pre like not fully finished. Like I think that's why there's so yeah, many close-ups of characters because it's easy to not have all the effects done for that, those shots. Um, yeah. So I'm cautiously optimistic. I'll definitely watch it. I feel like, I, I don't want to say everything live action that Halo has come out with, but Forward Unto Dawn, really good. The uh, the Halo 3 uh, live action TV spots, yeah, which put together a short stuff. film. I incredible. Um, the, those Halo so, 3 model ones were good, too. Like the fake yeah, the veterans. Diorama. Very, yeah. very good. So there there is so much good stuff in Halo that you hand it to a good director, a great director and a great writer. And they can make something incredible. So I, I am optimistic for this just because it looks like they're heading in that direction as opposed to just generic action. So fingers crossed. We'll see. Yeah, let's hope it's good. Um, so, yeah, that was that was the Game Awards. It was, it was a good show this year. I still think, hey, just have a show where you announce things and have a show where you give awards and make it nice. And But I understand yep. combining them as well. Uh, just, uh, you know, recognize people a little bit more. Uh, folks, if you enjoyed this show, you can find all of our content at subpixelfilms.com. We'll bring you straight to our YouTube channel. Uh, you can also find local chat uh, directly, anchor. Dot, anchor. Dot, I don't actually know. Anchor.fm uh, slash local chat, I believe. Anchor.fm sure slash local chat. Anchor.fm slash local chat. I couldn't remember if it was FM or not, or I was thinking of something else. Um, you can even support us there if you want to. You don't have to. We don't need money because we are money. Not even a good tag. Well, we are I'm made of money. Uh, you can find I, me on Twitter I'm at Hunt270. Money. You can find Ian on Twitter at Think Gibson. Please come back next week for uh, our next year is year in review uh, episode. Yep. Will be up, and then in two weeks will be our game of the year discussions. We're not doing anything like crazy. We're just each going over our games of the year and kind of coming together and be like, hey, what are the top games this year? What do we think? worked out and all that sort of stuff so definitely tune in for that all four of us will be there so come on by and don't forget this saturday more poke will for your mm -hmm. pokemon pleasure see you there halucha bye everyone